guys, Two Bricks back here again with part two of my T-Rex build series. And uh, you can see here, she's looking a little more complete. She's got a whole tail and back section going on. I'm gonna take a look at all the changes that I've made today in this video. And hopefully you guys are enjoying seeing the, the Rexy build in progress. And if you are, don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I'm gonna be doing updates on this um, every week if I can. And uh, yeah, with that, let's just take a look at the updates. All right, so this is the part that we took a look at in uh, part one, the main body section. Um, one change that I did make up here is that I switched out the elbow joints on the little um, tiny arms for uh, ball joints. I previously had a hinge with a single range of motion there, but a commenter kindly pointed out that uh, the T-Rex as an animal was only ever able to bend its wrists inwards. And so to achieve that, I just added that extra layer of um, movability by substituting ball joints right in here. So that's something that's cool. And then if you look down here, the main progress obviously has occurred in the back section with the addition of this huge tail. Um, one thing that I really wanted to have is the ability to pose the tail. And something that's really cool about the way that this is done is it's built in several sections, each of which is independently movable. And so you can get this really nice array of different poses out of it, which is something that I really wanted to do, but I didn't really sacrifice on the aesthetics too much since I have minimal gapping in between each of the sections. You can see there, even when you flex it to its most open on the one side, you really don't see too much in the way of gaps. As far as the color scheme, I tried to maintain that tan line all the way through the tail down to the very tip. And uh, something that I didn't realize I had in my parts collection was a couple of these one by six plates in this kind of pinkish color that, um, that Lego used to use uh, a while back. I think it's called sand red possibly. But yeah, I only had uh, just a, a couple of pieces and I really thought that they went well with the whole color scheme. So I decided to just put those in there in the tail. And I think they kind of give a cool little bit of flair to the color scheme. Um, now you can see from this angle here that the tail is kind of bowing down a little bit. And that's because the, uh, the part that connects it to the body I'm not entirely happy with the stability of that structure yet. And I think if I, I think I can pop this off and show you guys. Uh, I don't wanna break it. Okay. Um, there's a couple of areas in here that are uh, Technic assemblies that just plug in the tail to the, to the body. And there really isn't enough tension in that to be able to hold the tail up completely horizontally. And that's something that I need to work on because um, it, I don't wanna stress the parts and because I, I do want to leave this model together for a long time and I don't want to have it where uh, eventually the parts will you know, bend or break or anything like that. And when we take a look down the length of the tail, you can see I've used a whole array of different kinds of uh, sloped and curved pieces and different techniques to create a nice kind of organic feel to the curvature of the way that the tail starts at the spine. And it seems to kind of, it seems to kind of suggest that it's curving downwards, even though it's actually built um, fully horizontally just using the shape, I've kind, of, uh, I've kind of accentuated that idea that the tail is drooping down, in addition to the fact that the engineering of the connection between the tail and the body does actually have a little bit of droop on its own. Through this whole model, I've tried to have a good balance between studded areas and smooth areas, and I think just kind of using the studs to suggest maybe a kind of a scale, scale type of a pattern, uh, even though I think it's probably debated at this point that dinosaurs had scales, um, but just to get that kind of texture with, with certain areas and just to break it up enough that it doesn't feel boring or artificial. Um, that's been something that's been really fun. And then I think just continuing that down into the tail, that's been a really fun balance to kind of figure out. Okay, so I've removed the panels on the outside of the tail to give you guys a look at how the internals were uh, created. And the whole thing is based around this uh, technique of stacking up these rounded Technic beams. And then each of those has the rotation point um, within it right here. And I used rounded bricks all the way up and down so that there's a nice smooth, um, there's a nice smooth rotation that can happen where nothing is gonna interfere with this, um, this motion. And then I've used one by one Technic bricks with the four plates on the side to connect the two, uh, the two beams together and fill in the, uh, the space in between. And then that gives me the attachment point for the exterior panels as well. 
And you can see that I follow that design all the way down to the tip of the tail. And I have just this little panel uh, that gives you the, the kind of finish of that part where the tail kind of dips down. And then it all fits together perfectly. And there we go. So in here, I'm giving you guys a better look at uh, the way that this is attached. And there's actually only two attachment points. Um, that's this and this part right here where there's, there's an axle that runs down through the tail sections and then connects it to this little um, lift arm assembly that plugs into the Technic frame of the, of the body. So what I'm probably gonna end up doing to try to mitigate this issue is I'm gonna add uh, one or two additional layers of these rounded beams into the structure of this part of the tail. Um, that might mean that this area has to change slightly. And so that will then be used to attach to a third point uh, somewhere down here um, that will hopefully just even out the whole tail because what it really needs is just a little bit of extra support on the bottom. You can see there that we're going to try to remove that, um, that gap right there. It should sit roughly like that. And that's something that should be addressed by the next update. So one of the ways that I was able to achieve minimal gapping in between each of the sections is that I'm kind of I'm doing an alternation between plugging in each panel into the whole stud or the middle uh, creating the half stud. So you can see that there's a slight offset between where this plate um, is attached and this plate. And then that just alternates all the way down the tail with uh, middle of the stud, whole stud, middle stud, whole stud. And by creating that half stud gap, I'm making it so that there's enough room for the rotation to take place without creating a full kind of large uh, single stud wide gap in between each of the tail sections. And then in addition to that, having the interior be mostly black or in you know the case of the parts that you can see poking through matching the color scheme, I really feel like it gives it such a smooth look. Okay, and I just taken off of her little temporary stand because I wanted to show you guys the work that I had done on the underside. Um, previously, this section kind of continued to go downwards in this direction and, and then kind of squared off right here. And so I just switched around some of the configuration of that a little bit to have it start to come up a little sooner to meet up nicely with the kind of um, the lines of the underside of the tail right there. And I have a little, just a panel right here, which um, just covers up this gap nicely without needing to, to rely on too many of the same techniques of just, you know, different uh, directions of slopes. I just felt like I wanted to switch that up a little bit back there. Okay guys, and check out the smooth motion that you get on that tail. I think that's my favorite part about this whole update is just how organic and alive that looks. Um, I think it, it works fantastic. And uh, one of the really cool bonus things about it is that um, having this range of motion means that I can get some really nice static poses as well with a lot of curvature and a lot of life uh, going down you know, into the tail of the model. So I think that's really gonna add a lot when it's in its final kind of static pose. And then the last two changes that were made were that I added this little cover over the, the section with the head actuator. Um, and then, you know, I just wanted to be able to um, kind of set it and then put the cover over it and then not have to see that gap back there. I think that adds a lot to the overall look of the model to just not have a big kind of deep ravine cut into her spine like that. <laughs> so yeah, that was something that I wanted to do. And then the other thing was that I had to just shorten um, sorry about the focus. I had to just shorten this little area right here that had uh, that had a plate that covered all the way up to the end of this gap. But the problem with that was that it stuck out so far that it was just interfering with any kind of sensible tail arrangement that I wanted to have. So I just shortened that down so that now when it's at its full extended point, it um, it only comes out to just under here, uh, as opposed to all the way out out here. So I think that works a lot better, and I think having just this um, Having this fairly small black gap in here is uh, is a worthy trade-off to achieve that. And then once this cover is back on it, you won't even know that that's there anyway. So one of my favorite things about having the tail done now is I actually now know how long the model is going to end up being. Uh, at its current form in the most extended um, version, how you see it right here, it is 32 inches long or 101 Lego studs um, and almost three feet. It's 2.66 feet. So yeah, she's, uh, she's a big lady and I'm really excited and a little nervous to get her up on her feet and to be able to start uh, figuring out how I'm gonna do the final display of this model because I do definitely wanna have a full uh, kind of display model for you guys for the final video kind of showcasing 
the the whole thing in its natural environment, which would be you know in Jurassic Park. Um, so yeah, I'll be sharing some updates with you guys soon about what all that's going to look like as well. But yeah, it's just really cool to see, to kind of start getting a sense of what the final piece is going to be. All right, guys, so that's your update for this week. Um, if you liked the video, please do go ahead and uh, like and subscribe, thumbs up, comment, all that good stuff. Uh, if you didn't, please go ahead and thumbs down. Let me know what you didn't like. I will try to um, address that going forward. I'm really trying to grow and get better and uh, give you guys the best content. So. Yeah, feedback is super duper appreciated. I'm gonna do my best to get some kind of an update on the legs as quickly as I can, but there are a whole host of engineering challenges associated with that. Um, that's why I actually decided to do the tail first. Initially, I was planning on doing the legs first and then the tail, but this just ended up making more sense. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.